We maken een reis door het zuiden van een continent in opmars. Afrika verreist, zeggen ze. Maar hoe dan? En welke verhalen gaan daar achter schuil? Vier landen, acht verhalen, dwars door Afrika. Moet je kijken, alles wat er is achtergebleven van wat ooit was de grootste, de meest succesvolle kopermijn van Zambia. Ik bedoel, dit, dit haal je zo van de grond af. Ah. Je kijken man. Zit al die jongens hier uit de buurt zijn hier allemaal aan het graven. Daar en daar en daar. Maar het is levensgevaarlijk. Ik weet niet, tot dat hier zo naar beneden. Die grond is allemaal ontzettend los. How many are you here? Almost 1000. Yes. And they're all friends? Yes. Yeah. Or you fight? No. no. Never fighting. <laughs> So, so you make a tunnel inside the mountain? Yes. Yeah, inside, yeah. And but do you have any protection? Do you do you make no, it strong? No, no. no protection. No protection. But it's risky, guys. Yeah, yes. Huh? Yes, it's risky. Uh, it's no risky. protection. This is illegal. This is illegal. It's like that. And police, they don't make a problem about this. It's a very big problem. Just come pushing, pushing outside. Police pushes you out. Yes. Yeah. And then what, what do you do? We are running. Okay. Okay. Run. We are running. <laughs> or, or you pay them? Yeah, yes. I'm, I'm going to give them the money. That's mine security. Oh my! Punch, never be. Abrisan. Hi. Never be. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm Dina Wine. To Allah land. I'm not paying for the fiance. Fiance to Allah Milan. Okay. Are you security? Yes. Okay. So you're watching for our security? Yes, very much. Okay, thank you so much. Mm. That's very good to hear. That, that's why we are here. Yes. Okay. Mm. For these, these guys, they are violent. <laughs> we have to go? We are coming. So we, we leave these guys here. Yeah, let's go. We pick the vehicle. Okay. 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 What, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? No, no, let's pick the vehicle. We are currently flying over the Itsanchi Golf Estate. 
which is the, the residential area for senior employees of the mine. Hardra, sweep around to the right and uh, go up a little bit higher, Hardra. My house is in the trees, just uh, that's my house. So that's where the assistant general manager of the mine lives. We mogen mee met een mijnbedrijf dat bezig is met de grootste koperwinning in heel Afrika. Zo hoog boven in de lucht voelt het surrealistisch. De mens, zijn machines en de ontembare lust naar mineralen. Maar voor de mijnbaas is het allemaal heel gewoon. Een manier van leven. So what was that like when you came here? Well, what did it look like here? Seven years ago, the hillsides weren't covered by housing. And um, that was all empty. That was all empty. Oh, a few small houses, but now what you see are um, houses that have been created with money behind them. All came here because you guys came. It all came here because of the mine. Solwezi town was here. It was a, a central town for the province, but it, it was a, a long forgotten backwater province and um, a small trading area where farming inputs and so on were distributed. A small town. This was all bush. I've worked in more sophisticated parts of Africa, namely Southern Africa, South Africa. But Zambia, I've really enjoyed working for this company in particular. Um, and the challenge of the job is, is exceedingly high and that's what what That's what this? we do it I mean, for. Like this alien machines here. This is how we do our business. Yeah. <laughs> Each of these trucks can carry 180 tons of rock of these large white trucks. Um, and on average, we move about 300,000 tons of rock a day. What's the siren for? The siren is to alert people to the, uh, the fact that we're about to start blasting in the pit and that people must evacuate to beyond the safety zone, uh, which is 500 meters outside of the blast area. So what is uh, living in a, in a mine pit like? Well, people actually quite enjoy living and working here. Really? I mean, do you, do you really mean that? Yeah. I wouldn't have stayed. I came on a two-year contract uh -huh. and I just never left because I've enjoyed it. It's been great for my family. Um, and what is it that you enjoy so much about? Being in charge of all this. Hello. Do you know when the blast is coming? How many minutes? Uh, what time is it? I don't know. Just about um, not more than 15 minutes from now. 15 minutes from now. Is that why you're hiding here? Yes. Is your name really Robbie Robbie? Yeah, my name is Robbie. <laughs> I don't know which spelling I must use, but I use both. It says Robbie Robbie. Yeah, but that's one of them. What, what do you say to Zambians will say, well, foreign mining companies like yours are just here to direct Zambia to take the wealth out and leave us with this. I can only um, reply with, with the facts. The facts are that we, uh, this company, First Quantum Minerals, um, started in Zambia 15 years ago from very humble beginnings. It worked very hard within Zambia. Um, to create a large mining business. It's not just foreign capital that's come in. They've worked hard to find the money. They've worked efficiently and they've taken the money that they've made to grow the business um, within Zambia so that currently we are building the largest uh, mining investment within Zambia. All of that generates copper, which Zambia's economy needs, and it's provided profit, a taxable profit, for the government. What happens with the community when they hear a mining company is coming to town? Can you describe that to me? I would say huge excitement because, as I say, if, you, if you'd been here before, you would find that the people were living a subsistence lifestyle. They would 
just about be able to manage to grow what they can eat, and that was it. So there's no economic activity or very little, so there's no way of progressing. The schooling in, the, in this um, province was the worst in the country. We are now working to try, so nobody could escape. Nobody could generate economic activity. Nobody could learn to run a business. So with the presence of the mine, even though it's brought an influx of other people and therefore competition, it's also brought opportunity. So how much money do you make here? Um, I'm sure you can read our annual financial statements, but uh, it's several hundred million dollars are, are made each year. Uh, each year? Yes. Confirming all three boxes under machine communication. Are you a driver? Yeah, for sure. Those, those big machines? Yes. Isn't it hard? No, it takes courage. Yeah? Yeah, sure. Uh, do, do, you, do you like it? I like it very much. Why do you like so much? Yeah, you know, when uh, you're doing such an, uh, a task, you have to concentrate. So when, when, when you don't concentrate, it mean you won't like the job. Yeah. But if you, you, you concentrate when doing your job, you will like it. Really? So I like my job very much. Yo! laten vallen op nog meer grotere kopervoorraden en daar heel snel aan de slag wil. What's happening? We're working here. We're, ah. we're, we're crossing the portals. Are you filling up the potholes? You know what? Yeah. Huh? Are you filling up the potholes here? We? Ah, we're, we're, we're going up where the potholes is. We're going to close the, the potholes so that you pass very well. Ah. The Lord, yeah. Thank you very much. Eh. But he's blocking the road. No, well, well, it's just because of money. We need money. You need money for filling up the potholes? For, yeah, because yeah. the, the government is not working. Yes, we've decided to wake up the potholes there. How much does that cost? No problem of, of, of uh, ten two or ten kwacha, no worries. Ten kwacha for yeah. passing through? Yeah, yeah. And what happens if I don't pay? Ah, it's that no problem. Sense. Also no problem. <laughs> and I go. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> ten kwacha. Let me see. Is 20 kwacha fine? No. Oh, yeah. you, really, you really want 10? Yeah, oh, thank, thank you. you. Okay. God bless you. <laughs> Thank you. This is all brand newly built? Yes, we started construction in um, mid-2011 uh, and we're approximately 70% through um, in terms of 
completion of our construction phase of the project. I guess before you started, there were people also living here, right? Where we stand. Well, there was a small community located within the pit of approximately 30 families. But within the, the area um, required for the project, which is about 400 square kilometers, um, there are approximately 570 families that are affected. What will happen with, with all of this? So this will all be demolished. And these people all have to move? That's correct, yeah. We are just entering the, the first point in the, in the new planned town. And this road that you can see is, is part of the town plan. Yeah. What's, what's there? This is a private school, mainly targeting our, our mine workforce. On the right is the, the clinic that we hope to open within the next three months. The reason for building the clinic is so that our employees will have access to, to adequate health care. We're essentially standing in one of the suburbs of, of the town. Um, people have already moved in, as you can see in, in some of the houses. Yeah. We have plots uh, with houses that have been built by the mining company and are being sold to our mine employees so that they become the, hon the, the owners of their house. Um, now, a copper mine, I was told, runs about 20 years. Yeah. Why are you making all of this for just an investment that will run out in 20 years. Well, if you look at um, other African countries, and I take an example of, of, of Johannesburg in South Africa, which started as a, okay, it was a gold mine, uh, or mainly gold mining activities, but there was a lot of reinvestment within that and a lot of secondary economic development. The mines are gone, and now you have a very large city. So you imagine building a city from scratch, basically. Essentially, um, the, with the mine as, as the primary driver or the primary economic activity. Right now, the mine worker has to buy that house, you, you told me. Yes, um, that's correct. Why, why would he do that if the mine is going to close after 20 years? Um, the, why would he do that? Why would the, the miner buy the house? Well, I guess... Uh, Property is a good investment. Um, <laughs> but it's your, somebody mean, could. I in mean, the middle of the jungle, yeah. on, a, on a on a on a mining area that's going to close eventually. So why would you want to? Why, why would you want to stay here once the mine closes? Well, we're looking very long term. I mean, we're looking at having, within 20 years a a very large town can develop, and um, with a large number of secondary economic activities. Een Johannesburg in het oerwoud. Dat is wat het mijnbedrijf voor ogen heeft. Een goed gepland Eldorado voor de gelukszoekers van Zambia. Maar een lokale activist hoedt me voor al die mooie beloften. Nou, one of the maps I got was this one here. The amount of land is enormous. That's just about one and a half times the size of Hong Kong. So what do you think? Why, why do they buy such a huge stretch of land then? What do you suspect? It's business. It's business. If you look at the Trident project, it's multifaceted. They want to sell off some of the land to other business people that would like to do business with them. So after, after the mine has run out, after 20 years, they want to keep on making money off of the land? Of course, of course. 
Of and course. Is that also why they're building houses? Oh yes, that's it. We are the legitimate owners of this land. I'm telling you what the people say. We are the legitimate owners of this land. And they make this statement, we own the stone. <laughs> they say, will you explain to us why we should not participate in the wealth that is being extracted from that land? Imagine, here is a household whose village was sitting right on top of um, Sentinel mine pit. And you want to shift that family from there. What material value would you place on that family? Knowing that under customary law, that piece of land is their property. That includes the minerals. You see, that's the Does region. Does it include the minerals? The minerals, yes. Are they the legal holders of those minerals? What do you mean when you say legal? A piece of paper? Huh? That's where now, first quantum must learn something. You see, those people under customary law, ownership of land is not written on a piece of paper. It goes according to history and oral tradition. You see those red numbers on the houses? This one here, right? Yeah, this one here. Yeah. This house, all of these are set for destruction and for resettlement. They're earmarked. They're earmarked for resettlement. So they're all going to disappear? Yeah, they will not be here. This your house? Yeah. This one? Yeah, this one. It's quite a big one. Yes. I know the kitchen. I have a spare. Spare bedroom. Akunu di kukuna turi denga. Eh. Ma TV. You come to visit your neighbors here? Yeah. <laughs> you miss them. I am going to sit down and pull and I want. Eh. Antu ago. Ina hembanga adikun. The chine ichina husha hadika ha first. Hakuira wen ano na mkurumpi u amtuara kuna ano na kamwa na kaka yaki tuara kuna. The chio oyum yakuira kuronda tu viruri. Iran at three feet could do that to Yaman Wishma way to a catuitual in nature to a shikaman and Karay to Chochich, Akai. Do you know why the mine wants you to leave this place? Eh, you know, Patachi and I monu Kushina, the O Yi and I look you eat Kushina, Kudimarora, or Marora, the O Yan and our Nekomanin Fung for me in the moon. Did she a to net to act from Shamun, composetin around Burk Church while I'm grown that you to win and around the Marora, a to add one a day to adding a day to ask Shakamahamarore to Nyakaya. Hanu Hera, Chuikarane, Marora, a to now to the home, he would. Iran the Kushianka Kurre, yet to Nyak and Nyakama Fuku Nama Fuku, my yes and my yes, did she a to trust Shakamahan, Hera Quikarana, we are when I'm in Zana to one. So is yours. Hmm? I 
want, I want to. I want to as I will to keep show. Eji ne kuema, na tuweza kuema barua mka mka rumbi, barua. Ito ya mbu mka rumbi ya barua, yeye utatika numera ina. Kwa kujua mani na toku yitu pangi na mumai. Ditu mikala tindiri ngai isato, koko loko. Ila yeye kwa jamii mikala isato, tayari zema jamu kwa sisi. Ana tamu chumpete yeye jamu. Membamu mabuku mai ni migodi kwa mtu mtuli ringa kwenye nani? Zita tu kuirukavani. Eto aku la forcing, aku la ona fuma kwa njia. Forcing tu yangu, na tu arandi, tu arandi pata. Kusuka na wenga, kuitejele wenga. Tatu wajare yaku katuni, amina mila sharuku nuni. Kus, yaku daba force, ujura. Kabaka kitu aji mama yeye mande mumeru kuzimda arundi. Yeye mako si tangu yanda so karembo iraka tangu landa kutom a karembo iraka yeye kaku tom na kuntam kuruko tu kus udeme kapaka kaka vuru udeme makamba mavuru yoma yeye mo tu afu tu afu kapaka na wanyi ditu a shikame netu tu shikame mumpete yetu na mante wetu muso kanta ditu wena nzu by p by force na tu force ino they're going to build a big town there with shops and schools. It's going to be better. In Bakayene ne tutu darunda. In Bakayene ni akwenu mchishimu charunda na mkwenu wakudani ndi inoka. Amutari ranga kukubaba. Hawohana hakutendeka. Indo ya kandi jenga na unakiro yuyu makuimba na ne ana kuhusha marumba. Ha, oli kwa mama hina amugumu na kani na mama na kutuamba. Fueta mani kufueta wakoto na tatu kuku. Ana kuhika mara mahafu au matenge. Maruani, ana badi kansa nchi, eh kudai kuto, ana badi na hano, hano na tulinga na tuti. Most zero, one million, two million, awanya na kuisunga na kwa. Sugora abudu kudafu dui kaya jumbo, tu mero, tu mero, nguo handi la mudi. Mero mare mare rangi ni fifty mero ni ranga hii, amana anga. Ira muntu yendi hashikaba yu, permanent. Yena wa wana hii, yena business, am permanent. Now, can you imagine people saying, like, well, it doesn't really matter what you give me. The fact of the matter is I was here first, so I have more rights than you. Our answer to that is um, the way uh, the, the mining regulations work and the, the land regulations work is that the, the state owns anything that's below the, la the, the ground and uh, the traditional chief is the custodian of the land and the occupant of the house is the owner of the property and anything that exists above the ground. So that's how we've defined it in our resettlement action. So he doesn't plan. have a right for what's under him? Yeah, that's essentially the... <laughs> and with a state you can always do business with? I suppose, <laughs> yeah. But even if you would offer to pay more and they still say no, we really don't want to move, what do you do then? So um, the, um, assuming we have a land lease, and we are the, the tenants, the legal tenants of the land, um, the definition of their status as landholders then changes. They are no longer a customary landholder. They are now a squatter on the land of a, of a, of a mining company, essentially. Squatter on the land where they were born. Yeah, that's, and, that, and that's, when that legal change takes place, that's how the definition changes. Now, so, where are the people going to be moved? The people will be moved somewhere behind Sentinel, somewhere here. Right, and, and this, here. this is the mining operation. This is the mining operation here. In Africa, or in Zambia today, in these communities, land has a sentimental, sentimental attachment to it. It's a mark of identity. You have no land, you are nobody. That psychological uh, understanding is crucial. So when you traumatize people psychologically by supplanting them from their 
ancestral lands, and you don't give them um, a compensation which will continually flow to the next generation, then that kind of compensation would not qualify to be called compensation. So they must continue to have food, they must continue to educate their children, commensurate to the kind of wealth that's coming out of their soil. If they are not smart today to be able, like FQM, to extract the minerals from there, let, then let them, those minerals be buried, a generation will come which will be smart enough to be able to extract their minerals. Do you think that makes any, any sense in a boardroom in, in England or in Toronto? To a businessman, to that, a business that doesn't man. make sense. Huh. But you see, that's what makes the difference between legality and morality and justice. van de koninklijke chief van dit gebied, dus eigenlijk de grote baas hier. Dat is de man die het land van de mensen hier heeft verkocht aan het Canadese mijnbedrijf voor, heb ik me laten zeggen, 250.000 dollar. En ik wil eigenlijk wel weten waarom. Hello, Royal Highness. Yes, please. How, how do I greet you? Do I give you a hand? Do I bow? No, no, do I go on my knees? Afukama. You go on my knees? On yes. your knees. Mm -hmm. And then you clap three times. Like this? Yeah. Yes. You clap three times. Okay. That is our tradition. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> this is what we do in Holland. <laughs> I'm Bram. Pleased to meet okay, you. Okay. Thank you very much. A kengir kum kwasha kutunga palace. Antungi the palace, yanyo. Your the palace. Chi, yes, the chi ame china mweni palace ya kengere kuingira benefita me. O you chawana chao, na me kuingira benefita me. That's why na yinguiri ni ireja kuronda ana Maria kengere kutunga o palace. Aishi ne ma shares kuronda ni ro establishment ni community akeri benefit. Company, name my shares. I, I, I heard that $250,000 was paid. Oh, you, I mean, I don't know how to do Do you regret? You signed? No, 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 Two, na kundimba, na o itu kusenda mpata yeji maku. E tu tuke ira konsentrati na mpata idi na ma minerals. Dichi o mweji ma hera nkanji kijiri kusaina na sehera muanyi. Na ina sehera irimu kachi tuiranga kle muanyi ira blemu frumendu wanyi. Iranga ni frumendu wa iri blemu mronga Mwani. Hello. Hello. Abraham. Hello. Are you are you leaving today? Yes. Okay. Where are you going? I'm going to township. To the township. Yes. And this is your house. Yes. <laughs> How do you feel about leaving your house? <laughs> Yes. 
says that she would have needed more, um, a little more compensation. And uh, apparently where she's going will be a bit far away from her farming area. What happens is that there's already a compensation package for each family. The compensation package includes the primary um, housing unit and uh, it also includes all assets, however small, that they owned here, such as chicken coops, shelters, and any other thing that is around their home that they can, that is of, of monetary value, such as uh, fruit trees and any other thing like that. So when we are about to relocate them, we call them to sign an agreement. What did you think when they came? So for example, It's always like that with the community. Oh, not that. Okay. you might go What I've heard in, in the last couple of days is the copper is ours. So why wouldn't we get rich because of that copper? Why would it be a foreigner taking out that wealth? Aren't they right when they say that? It's a, it's a point of view that you can, you can endlessly debate. The government would disagree with that sort of uh, position. The good government would say it belongs to the country. Um, and if it wasn't for a mining country extracting it, it would continue to exist as nothing. It would continue to exist as, as something in the ground. Yeah, but they say we, we, we don't really regard government law because you also have something like traditional law. Yes. The chiefs, and we've been here for hundreds of years, yes. and in that system, this is ours. Yes. We were here before the state. It's a, it's a conundrum. Um, mining companies operate within the laws of the country and, and go into agreements with governments and pay governments for the rights. Um, they also have to work within the communities and within Solwezi First Quantum, as Consanchi Mine has very much tried to work with the communities. Um, but yeah, it, it's, it's a, a moral dilemma that, that has to be answered by everybody, but it starts with government. Have you, I mean, you've worked for so long in the mining industry in different parts of Africa. Have you ever had that doubt in yourself, like who am I to come here and take all of that wealth? I certainly have never phrased the question to myself in that way. But what I've always felt is that the mine should fit into the community and enable everybody to benefit. It looks inequitable, you know, the, the amount of, you can talk billions of dollars of, um, of money extracted from the ground. So what does the man here in the village get out of it? Um, well, he certainly doesn't get billions of dollars, but he gets a change, he can get a change in lifestyle. His life can change from what it was to, and the country as a whole.
By foot, so from Hana, he defaulted in the Nakushigahana. So, in a chain, I kept the ring and I saw the toilet, he didn't catch it, the toilet, you know. So, he did the toilet, you know. So how have the lives of these people here progressed in, in your vision? Um, from pre-resettlement to post-resettlement. Um, well, I could summarize it in saying that, uh, well, one area you would, you would talk about is standard of living. Um, particularly talking about the standard of the house that the, that the person has. Ours are quite small and, and, and basic. <laughs> well, I mean, our response to that is the, uh, our socioeconomic baseline studies show that the average house size is about 13 square meters. Mm -hmm. This house is about 19 square meters. What we're providing for is 151% of what they had before. So that's purely looking at size. But still, I mean, I saw no electricity. Um, yeah, toilet is outside the house. I mean, yeah. you would say with all the copper coming from this region and those people also from the region, you would have more than enough money to give them something more than that. Well, the, the approach we take is um, we, we look at where people have come from and um, we ensure that there is an improvement um, uh, based on, 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 on the baseline so situation. So it's a step forward and that's what our resettlement plan has deemed to be the improvement that we're satisfied with as a, as a company. So, what do you think? Not <laughs> 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 ah. <laughs> 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 Do you know anybody of the neighbors? Uh, a name one. Okay. Let's see. Congratulations. Now, Tatuahi Nankashi, no one at Tukuaha. Thank you for watching. If you like this, please check here for the next episode or for other recommended series. And don't forget to subscribe if you want updates on upcoming new travel series.